All right, guys. So I'm going to make a bumbling video. It won't be useful at all. And I'm going to stumble through on how to do the ham clock on a Raspberry Pi. Okay? I've done this once before. I have the ham clock running over here. But somebody gave me, Mr. Brian, a Raspberry Pi. Which actually got its own little screen on it and everything. Which I thought would be kind of cool. To maybe just see how it looks. Uh, um, and... Uh, test it out so um, the first thing you want to do is go type in ham clock let me get over here you see it'll be under clear sky Institute let me zoom in okay okay you'll click that site you'll see this thing here you see the download tab click on that click on the zip You'll download it. I don't know. You're gonna download a TGZ. Uh, there you go over here. Click on the user guide tab, and then it's gonna be. You need to move your page so you can, so you can like look at it. Uh, this document is additional supporting material. Can be found at Clear Sky Institute. Welcome to Ham Clock. When started, you may enter the setup system. Setup is required. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, we, we want the installation guide. I don't care about that. Uh, this is telling you how to set up the clock as far as, like, entering the colors, the call sign, and all this stuff. But um, this is the user guide. Okay, I don't want... I, I want the uh, um, how to install it. Okay. FAQ. How do I build the software? How do I build the desktop? How do I uninstall? I'm new to Raspberry Pi. How do I get started? What can I do? Uh, can ham clock run on Windows? How does ham clock compare to Geochron? Uh, let's see. Okay, click, I'm new to Raspberry Pi, how do I get started? You're absolutely completely new, start at raspberrypi.org. If you don't have a Pi yet, I would start with the Model 4B with one gig of RAM. The smaller Pis, such as the Zero W, will work. <coughs> CFAQ56. <coughs> <coughs> but the 4B is definitely more responsive. Many places sell pies, as you can see. The official list here. Um, for a display, you can use a small touchscreen, uh, or you can use an HDMI LCD display, or you can buy blah blah blah, buy a micro SD card. But they've got lots of links for you to buy things here. Insert the cart into your desktop computer. If your computer does not have an SD port, you need to try a USB adapter, such as this one that you can buy. Download and install the Raspberry Pi imager. Okay, we don't have that. So we need to do that. Okay, Raspberry Pi imager. This helps you um, it gives you the code to do it on uh, Linux, which is cool. Um, okay, so we're going to do that. Let me turn the radio down here. Okay, um, I'll click on this here. And um, run it as administrator. Yes. See, I, I don't... I did this a long time ago, and I couldn't remember how the hell I did it. But, anyway... Um, Let's see. Uh, you need to choose your device. Um, I need to pull it right out and see what it is actually to make sure if it is one or the other. Um, uh, 
I'm just trying to find out if it's a 3B or 3B plus. Okay, so in the case of mine, it's a 3B plus from 2017. Okay, so let me go here. We see that all these different ones. There's a Pi 1, a Pi, a Pi 0, Pi 2, Pi 3. Models B, A plus, and B plus, and compute module 3 and 3 plus. We have the Pi 0, 2W, the Pi 4, Pi 5, and no filtering, show every possible image. Okay, well, we're just going to click this one here. Uh, I am not sure which one we want. So let me go back into here. I do remember I was doing something and it needed to be something called bullseye or something like that, but uh, I don't know if that's uh, different. So, uh, ham clock says, okay, start the program and burn your SD card, choose the OS. Uh, it's not, I click choose OS. Select the first choice on the top. Start the program and burn your micro SD card with the RPI operating system as follows. One, click choose OS. Select the first choice on the top. Click choose storage. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay. Um... So, why don't they just specify it's Pi OS 64-bit, a port of Debian Bookworm with Raspberry Pi desktop recommended, recommended. This is what it says. Uh, you got 32-bit, you got legacy, you got uh, other. Um, now, you have these other ones here. I need to do these. I need to try these. Uh, there's um, Media Player emulation and game os oh uh, yeah so emulators for running retro computer platforms other specific os purpose multi-utility erase dude i want to do the damn emulation one i'm gonna have to do that later at another time yeah okay okay now i need to find an sd card so give me a minute Okay, so I clicked my mass storage here. Okay. And then now, this disk I had problems with, so it might not work. Let me click. Would you like to copy? Would you like to apply OS customization? No. All existing data, data will be erased. Sure, you want to continue? Yes. Okay. You'll see this thing. It'll say, please insert the drive. Ignore that, okay? That's, uh, that doesn't matter. Don't cancel it. Just ignore it. Wait for this thing to get done doing its thing. At least as I recall. You see down here, we can see the progress of it. Now it's going to sit there and do this for a while. I don't remember how fast it is. This is a pretty fast computer. With like 32 gigabytes of RAM in it. SSD, all that fun stuff. Core i5. But I imagine it's still going to take some time. See, now look, I click that down below there and I can see my progress. So pretty cool. I found a bunch of my old cards uh, and some ones that had come from Dave with the printers that I was having trouble with. And so um, I'm really glad that that one seems to work because I couldn't get it to work with my 3D printer stuff at all. It just didn't want to work. I think it was improperly formatted uh, for doing uh, Clipper. 
And so, should be good on this. So, I'll come back when this is done. I'm, you know, sure it'll work, but yeah, we don't want to sit here and make you guys wait. Okay, so I think it finished. Let me click on this again. Okay. Yeah, it has been written to my storage drive, so you can now remove the SD card from the reader. Continue. Okay. So basically, we close this thing. Close this out. Close this out. Do not format it. I like to go in. I don't like having problems. I'll click it and find it here. And we click safely eject usually. Mm. I wonder why. It's strange, it's not like it says safely remove. But it's like I don't know. Not prompting me. Okay, so now I need to find a cord for the pie. So give me a second. Okay, so I found a, a cord from like I think probably one of my uh, printers or something. So that should be a charging cord. Uh, so that should work. But let's go back over here and see what they tell us to do next on the Ham Clock website. Okay. So it says if you're new to the pie. You start at raspberrypi.org. Uh, if you don't have a Pi, download and install the Pi Imager. Click OS, blah, blah, blah right? Uh, remove SD card when it says it's finished. Insert the card into your Pi. Connect a keyboard, mouse, and Ethernet in a display to your Pi. Okay, that's going to be fun. So, um,. I'm gonna have to probably um, figure out something interesting. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll put the actual um, touchscreen display. So here's the Pi. I'm going to put the touchscreen display on it. It goes in like this. It doesn't hit all the pins, just the end ones. And um, we'll go ahead and set that thing up. Okay, so now I have a pie with a screen on it. Okay. We need to uh, grab our SD card, insert that into the S into the pie. Um, I don't think I need to explain to you about doing that, but anyway, it goes in there like that. All right, so now we need to either hook it to an HDMI and or use the screen on it or both. Um, bring this back over here. So. We do need a keyboard, we do need a mouse. Um, I'm trying to think of what the easiest way is going to be for me to be able to do this. Um, I think that I have over here um, uh, a, a wired keyboard and a wired mouse, which I think that's just what I'm going to do for now. So, we got four USB slots on this thing. And I'm going to see uh, about moving this keyboard here. And maybe I can unplug it. I have a. Um, I have a wireless one somewhere, and 
just try to figure out what the hell I did with it because well, that would probably save a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I have a wireless one here. In fact, um, let me see. Okay, so what I decided to do is I went uh, completely wireless with everything. Okay. I've got the Pi here. I, I want it to sit up here while I do this uh, so they can catch everything. Let's remove this keyboard, I guess. Um, man. So, we don't have... I'm not going to have a monitor to really show you very well what the heck is going on. Um, let's see here. So my idea is I should be able to power it off of here. There we go. Okay. I don't know what it's going to do to be honest with you. Um, so it says insert the micro SD card into your Pi. Get keyboard, mouse, and Ethernet and display to your Pi. I don't. I'm not going to connect Ethernet. I don't have any way of doing that. I can't believe it does have an Ethernet connection on it. I didn't realize that. Uh, I didn't do that before. Um, we just see if this works or not. You know, is it possible I put the disc in wrong? Yes, it is. So, um, now it's turning green. Okay. I'm seeing a little activity on the screen here. It looks a little strange. There could be a problem with the screen. I don't know. I've never tried this one before. So, just uh, bear with me. It looks like it's doing something. I don't know. It's kind of flickery. Okay, so after a minute or so, you will see the desktop. Uh, work through the setup menus. Um, start a browser by clicking the red Raspberry Pi in the upper left corner and then the internet. Go to the My Project Clear Sky Institute. Um, if this continues, I'm going to hook the uh, monitor here to this because it doesn't seem to be working. I don't remember how long it took. Like, it might have took a while. To me, it looks like there might be an issue with the display. It is possible that the... Um, um, display is not supported. I... I I really don't know if it is. So I see the green light flashing. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. I just let it sit for a while, I guess. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to try something. Okay. So, apparently... Um, we're not going to be using the display here. Um, must not be compatible. Okay, so I plugged it into here. I need to boot up my other computer really quick so that I can follow along with the uh, steps. So, yeah, this display on the Pi uh, is either mm, not working or maybe um, it 
the, the mouse is also not working either, so. Um, I don't know if there's actually a battery and it could be bad. Um, let's see here. If I have a battery, handy handy. I really don't like this mouse because it doesn't light up. If there's a problem, okay, it looks like it. Ooh, so. We're going to go power this thing down. I'm going to pull the screen. I think the there's a problem. I I don't know. I think there's a problem with this thing. So um I'm just going to do this and run it like that. So, we'll set it down. Okay. We'll go ahead and power it up. We'll wait for it to do its thing. And I'm imagining that we'll see it come up much quicker. Yeah, okay. So I just wanted to try an experiment, and that's why I said I'm going to make a video bumbling through all this. But. I need to get my other computer pulled up since this one is connected to this monitor. And we're up and running, so give me one second. Okay, we'll wait for that. We can see what it's doing in real time. Um, Give me one second. Uh, oops. Okay. I need to move my keyboard. Cam clock. Clear Sky Institute. Clear Sky Institute ham clock. Okay, so FAQ. Uh, I'm new to Raspberry Pi. How do I get started? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Insert micro SD card into the Pi. Connect the keyboard, mouse, Ethernet display. Uh, connect, connect power. After one minute, you should see the desktop. Walk through the setup menu. Start a browser by clicking the red Raspberry Pi in the upper left corner. Okay, so let's see here. And it's a little more responsive now. Okay. Welcome to Raspberry Pi Desktop. Before you start using it, there are some features you need to set up. Press next to get started. Okay. Country. We don't want United Kingdom. But Mike, Mike will want that one. Okay. Time zone. Uh, um, Arizona. Okay. Use English language, use English keyboard. Next. Okay. Setting my location. Please wait. Um, I should be able to probably click connect to Wi Fi. I'm not, uh, these I don't use them on Ethernet. So you get a lot of questions on the live streams. What is that? What is that? Well, that's ham clock. So the. The, um, the ham clock's over there, dude. And we're building one right here. Now, what is you can see this one here has the edges of the Raspberry Pi on it. Because the size of it is not quite right. 
It was originally set up for a 40 inch screen and I don't know exactly why I can't quite make it fill the screen like it was originally. Uh, so basically what I need to do with that one is completely redo it as well or learn what I did wrong. Uh, but for now, we're waiting on this one and this should help people that are you know curious about this and how to, how to get it started. Okay, so you'll need to create a username to log into your Pi. The username can only contain lowercase letters, digits, and hyphens and must start with a letter. Okay, so I'm just going to call mine Ham Radio Hack, as you might expect. So once you create your username and password, it'll ask you to select uh, one of your uh, Wi-Fi. So I gotta look here and see. Okay, I've got a couple of them in here that, and the problem is I don't know which one's which because I have a repeater. On the end. the repeater one we well, can kind of tell that one's got an extra bar I don't know if I want to probably connect to the main one I think just because it looks pretty good on here so next and then you enter your password and then once you get your password in there you can click next and wait and see if it connects. So you, you don't need the Ethernet on the Pi 3B Plus. I don't know, maybe the early Pis didn't have Wi-Fi. Like, that's the whole point of the damn thing. Okay. Uh, both Chromium and Firefox browsers are pre-installed on Pi OS. Select the one that you prefer to use. Uh, and they want you to say Chromium. Um... The clear sky said start the browser by uh, clicking the red by uh, corner internet chromium. I don't prefer chromium to be honest with you, but we'll just click next. Okay. The operating system and applications now will be checked and updated if necessary. This may involve a large download. Please oh, press next to check and update software. Skip to continue without checking. I'm going to click next and just see what it does. It's checking for updates. Now, the Pi 3B is pretty damn slow. Um, so, if you think you're going to use the ham clock and then get into the web browser, boy, you're going to be visiting the memories from dial-up days. So, um, I don't know what kind of memory and RAM this thing has, but it's not a lot. Getting updates, please wait. So, I'm going to come back when. It's, okay, so now it says the system is up to date. We can come in here and click OK. And it didn't look like it. Okay. And set up and ready to go. Uh, so. We'll click restart and see how long this takes. Um, let's see. I noticed a bunch of these guys on the radio. It's one o'clock in the morning here, but I think that it's 12 for them. Interesting. I heard they do the daylight savings time. Like I swear people stay up later. These same guys I normally wouldn't hear them past 10 o'clock. But here it is, basically 12 o'clock their time, and they're still up. 
Okay, so this thing's rebooting. Let's see. So, um, the uh, clear sky one doesn't really tell you about all this stuff that you you know, but what it does say once you get all this done, you'll have the Pi desktop. I think it'll probably show up here in a second. Um, let's see here. So, well, once we get to the desktop, we should be good to go. Definitely slow. Okay. So, yeah, I don't expect the uh, Pi 3B to be a speed demon. And it usually starts with this screen and then goes to something else. I don't know. I remember seeing this the first time, too. Um, so... We're connected to Wi-Fi. It shows Bluetooth. We're gonna let it sit for a second. I'm gonna go back on here just to make sure that like we're looking at everything okay. So start the browser, blah blah blah. Uh, go to the project page at Clear Sky Institute Ham Clock. Okay. This is kind of interesting. So um what is this mouse is? So the system is definitely laggy. Okay, we want internet. Uh, I think we can probably get away with Firefox. I don't know why we would need to use Chromium. So we're gonna wait a while for that to open probably. Um, the browsers are pretty memory intense. That's very, very slow. Maybe I didn't do it right. Nope. We did. It's just that freaking slow. <coughs> okay. So. <coughs> yeah, my, my mouse is moving like a drunk little man. It's froze. Excellent. Yeah, it really it it does not like this. Like, please stop the crap. I don't want none of this. Oh my god. Firefox has become pretty invasive. Uh um it does have some really good features. Um, I've been using this Opera browser, but some people complain that uh, it might not be good or something. Let me just close this. God dang. Man. It's like, froze. Froze. Just go away. Good lord. It's really hard to um, work with a computer that's this slow. <coughs> so that's why I'm saying you don't really want to use a Pi to do this. So, very, very delayed. Okay. So according to the thing, well, you just need to go to... Um, Go to my project web page at Clear Sky Ham Radio uh, Clock. Okay. I think I probably. I mean, I could type the full address. HTTPS colon. Why? Forward slash, forward slash. Clear. Sky Institute dot com forward slash ham forward slash capital H A M capital C clock. Okay. Enter. Uh, 
Now, I just did that because I think maybe, you know, it might save me some trouble trying to browse their page. <coughs> Start a terminal by clicking the red Raspberry Pi again and accessing the terminal. Okay. So this is probably where it gets tricky. So, boy, we're going to wait quite a while for this damn thing. You're definitely just going to want to wait for this thing to freaking load because if you try and jump ahead, you just need to put more burden on this thing and it knows what to do with. Okay. So... What they say is start the terminal by clicking the red raspberry again and access terminal. Follow the instructions on my desktop tab. Read the user's guide from the ham clock. Okay. Now I gotta go back into here. Read, uh, follow the instructions on my desktop tab. Where the, okay, desktop tab. So, I'll show you, the desktop tab is right here. Okay. Boy, this is so glitchy. Good Lord. So I, I can't even get it to hover. Okay. The problem with this thing, okay. We definitely do, man, if this thing would just be smooth, it it's so jerky. Oh my God, this is beyond ridiculous. Okay, I might be better off with a wired mouse. I'm wondering. Problem is I don't know which one of these Logitech ones is actually the one for the mouse. So uh, we won't try that, but the um man I'm really struggling with this damn thing. Okay. Dude, this is really driving me nuts. I I mean it's like a drunk computer. I I am going to try this other mouse. This is stupid. Okay. I, I know which one it is. It's this one. Okay. I, I just, I can't do it. It's so bad. Okay. I don't know if this one's any better. But it was a thought. It was like, well... Let me move this other one. Okay, it's no better, so... And it's harder to use. We'll go ahead and pull that, then. So you're probably going to have this problem like I am. With your pie. So... Okay. You may just want to read this on the other computer. There's supposed to be some other stuff on the side here. Um... Or you can move this screen. Like right here. We can kind of see it. God. All right. We want to bring the side of this up all the way. Stop. Damn. So, we, we have the instructions here. To install ham clock on Raspberry Pi, follow these steps. Okay, you need you need this because you need to copy and paste this. Um, open the terminal uh, on the target system GUI desktop by clicking the red Raspberry Pi. Accessory terminals will give you command line prompt. 
Download and run the installer script by entering the following commands. Use copy paste to avoid typos. Okay. This is going to be extremely difficult. This thing sucks. I'm like, maybe if I'm just, am I just not close enough? I seriously cannot do this. This is so stupid. Okay. Guys, I'm gonna have to, um, I, I, I cannot use this. It's just not, working for me. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try to close that browser. See, look at that. Now, so it can't run Firefox. Firefox is terrible. Okay, let's try Chromium. Okay. <coughs> it's, it just, it won't run. It's too much. I never used Firefox before, but I prefer Firefox. But I can see it's just not gonna run on this thing. You you cannot sit here and the, the delay is so bad. So hopefully the Chromium won't do the same thing. So Chromium is like the base of like Chrome browser. It's glitchy, but it doesn't seem to be as bad. We're waiting for this page to load. All I need is. I'm just gonna go. M clock. Okay. Let's see how long it takes. I I can't believe how bad. It's nuts. There's just no way you're gonna be able to easily do that. thinking Boy. another thing too um, I might change my network okay let me see here Yeah, give me a second. I'm going to change my network. So you're going to need to type the address in here because you won't find it with a regular search. So HTTPS colon forward forward clear sky institute dot com. Oops. Dot com forward slash ham forward slash capital H ham capital C clock okay let's make sure that I've got that in there and enter I could not get it by searching ham clock on this chromium browser it's because it doesn't use like the default like you know uh, search that you would normally see that sucks this thing is very much pissing me off I never had this much problem with the other one I've changed my uh, internet connection um, It is as if this stupid ass thing does not exist on here. Okay. Copy. 
Alright. Let's go ahead and close the Chromium browser. We really probably are going to have to use um, Firefox. I'm going to try it one more time. I've now copied it, so I should be able to just paste it. It's possible that there's something wrong with this Pi. Brian said he had problems with it. Um, and pretty warm for sure. Okay. Face and go. It's so unresponsive. Like, I don't know what to do. Maybe it needs a better power supply. God dang. You can't get it to do anything. I'm fucking pissed. I'm sick of this shit. This fucking thing's a pile of crap. If this is everybody's user experience with this thing, they're gonna be fucking mad. I'm just documenting it exactly how it is, what what's happening for me. So, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and tell you it's easy. But I didn't have this kind of trouble with my other one. It was a little glitchy. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with this one. So, we'll just say maybe it needed to be updated or something. Maybe it didn't like something. Maybe it just needs to be cleared out. I don't know. But, we got to be able to copy the script and run the crap in the terminal. And without, like, the mouse jumping and jerking all over the place... It's going to be really hard for me to copy it. I don't want to sit and, and, and read it off of another screen because it's a lot of crap to type. So, um, it's something that I thought should have been a short video ends up being like we're approaching an hour. So, um, I'll be back when I get closer to getting started on the script. So, this thing actually restarted and then restarted. So, there's Something's glitchy about it. Um, I saw it actually turn off. Yep. So, the pie is screwed up. It just keeps rebooting. One thing I can think of is maybe that I'm not getting enough power out of this uh, adapter here. I'm going to let it try one more time if it reboots. Okay. So, that's very strange. And I'm glad I caught that on camera because somebody else might go through this. But, I mean, like, that is really weird how it... I, I watched it restart quite a few times. Um... There might be something wrong with it, though. All right, we're now connected. Okay. Let me turn off the radio. All right, we'll wait for this browser to start. I think we'll have to type this thing in again. So I'll be back. So I'm gonna go over here where it says terminal. And I'm going to open the terminal. We need to try to click restore page to see what it does. Okay, our terminal's open. Okay. So I might go to my computer and pull up what I need to pull up. Download and run the installer scripts and enter the following commands. So, uh, it's a fairly long command. Let's just try something really quick. Okay, so I'm on the page here. I'll come back when I get the script copied. Okay, we're going to click on the desktop tab. We're going to grab this bar here and bring it down. 
to where we can see most of the page. Okay. Assuming that my browser is smooth, we will copy this. Oops. Copy. I'm going to my terminal. Paste. Enter. And that's where it just starts to do everything. So basically, that's all you got to be able to do is get to that part. Uh, if there are no errors, that's it. Be sure to read the guide, blah, blah, blah. Uh, proceed. Yes. Click enter. Um, Installing required helper packages. So, as you can see, there isn't a ton to it, but you know you got to set up the Pi and all that, and then and do this and navigate. You know, so if you try and use the Mozilla browser, you're going to run into problems. Okay. There's a little bit more information here. It says answer each question by typing yes or no by entering. If you choose not to install a desktop icon. You can run ham clock from the terminal at any time by typing this command ham clock and. If no errors, then that's it. Be sure to read the user guide to get the most from your ham clock. If something did go wrong, try to work through the manual steps again in the next session. And then it gives you and how to do it on a Unix type system. So uh, we're just waiting for this thing to finish. It is installing required packages, downloading uh, something from that, exploding ham clock TGZ into ESP ham clock, build for the web access, build for web sack, build for web access only, no hardware display. I don't know. Uh, no hardware display. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna put uh, build for web access only. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit no. I don't know what that'll do, but okay. The display size appears to be 1920 by 1080. This is where you run into a problem. You're going to need to install this again later on to get it correct to the monitor you use. Now, um, display size appears to be 1920 by 1080. Uh, select the desired ham clock size 1 through 2. Uh, I'm going to just select 2. Enter. Building ham clock. Um, I'm not sure if we could have a problem. We might have to go back and change that. Um, but I'd rather have a higher resolution than the 800 by 480. So 1600 by 960. And it should end up working fine on this monitor here. Um, but everything else I have is a different size. Um, and I don't know if I have another HDMI monitor floating around, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just I'm showing you how to do it. Now we're going to be waiting a while, so I'm going to be back when it's done doing the building part. So when you know the damn thing's hanging up, so I don't even think I can move the mouse. It doesn't seem to want to, uh, a group of guys gets off around 11. Yeah. I'm trying not to stay up to 2, 3 in the morning or in the I'm trying to get it to go over here so I can maybe... Just close it.
Okay. So it seems to be very glitchy. Even if I close that terminal, I'm getting this weird double arrow. This is really turned out to be a fiasco. Alright, so I'm doing this all over again. He doesn't want to paste. Wow. Okay, so I had to open the browser again and do that. And then uh, now I can paste it. Hit enter. I want to come in here and close the browser. Okay. I want everything closed as much as possible so that this thing has a chance. All right, so I finally got that part. Now it says install ham clock desktop, yes or no. Enter, yes. Install the user guide, yes. Uh, start ham clock automatically each time Pi is booted, yes. Enter. You may now run ham clock by typing ham clock. <laughs> Apparently that doesn't work, right? Oh, I spelled it wrong. Or maybe the computer glitched as usual. What? It says, it says you may now run ham clock by typing ham clock. H A M C L O C K. It's now 2.30 in the morning, <laughs> so I am tired. I have spelled it wrong three times. Okay. So now... You put your call sign in here or whatever you want. Um, let's try. Okay, uh, and then you would enter your uh, latitude and your longitude or whatever. Um, you need to look that up, but uh, it depends. <sighs> Just push enter on that. What is it? Uh, it gives me an error. I don't understand that <clears throat> full. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the longitude is. What does this other one say? It says. I don't know. You can always change this crap later. Um. Oh wait, no, no. We we'll just go through the grid. B M three four. Okay, that automatically pops in the correct information. Uh. Yeah. So if you have the GPS, you can do that. We'll just click 
Gun. Is it done or is it being glitchy? Uh, it looks like it doesn't like my call sign. I don't want my call sign there. I just want to put my name in there. Okay. Right. Empty. Done. <laughs> W0FU Like I don't want a damn fucking call sign in here Fuck you So apparently they want an actual real call sign On the other one I changed it later on See it doesn't fit to the damn screen But on my other uh, TV it did. But anyway. Uh, this clock looks completely different than my other one. Uh, I kind of prefer the other terrain type thing. Um, let me come in here and see if I can change this. So, you should be able to just come over here. Hey, quick call. Here you go, title. What the hell? Um... So anyway, this is what it's going to look like when you get it installed with the latest software. It gives you this DE and DX here and all this other stuff, which is cool, but um, I don't really understand half of the crap here, like the DX that it's showing me is this dot over here. Um, I, I want the propagation chart, so like the spots. Um, there's a lot of things I'd like to change on this. Um, okay. Well, my other one did like a bunch of different stuff. I won't. I won't update my other one. Interesting. Clicking on it just continues to change the color. It doesn't matter if you right click it or what you do to it. In my other one, it allows me to change it. I don't know why this one won't allow me to change it. Let me see if we have to do this. Okay, so it does take up the whole screen. Most of it, anyway. Um. <coughs> Man, I don't know. <coughs> so, on here, I don't know what this Vo 
VOA cap D axis. I don't want that. So we click the live spots. Should be able to remove that afterwards. Okay, so you can select Aurora Contest D E W X uh, the Moon. Just all sorts of stuff. Uh, Noah Planetary K. Uh, solar flux, sunspot. So this is cool. I I just want the live spots, and that's gonna tell me. Once you enable that, you're gonna see the spots from your location, and you're gonna see this other stuff. Um, I I don't know why they broke this down into regions like this, but I like my other clock. Uh, with the um, actual terrain um, I, I don't know if there's a way to change that we can see maybe there is um, okay I don't know. I don't like it though. Um, so we have the image of the sun here, and we have this one here. Okay, we'll click on this. Let's see what options it gives us. So here we can look at I'm gonna just click planetary K solar flux x-ray sunspot number um, there's contests you can have the contests over here too uh, we'll just click OK so this is the solar flux I'm not super on top of what all these numbers mean but and then we can come over here and do the same thing with this one um, all you can Interesting. What would the gray line tool be? Okay. So this is set on 61713. Um, show movie. <laughs> I'm going to remove that. Apparently, I can't remove that. Let's do that. Oh, interesting. I have no idea what that is. Whoa. Okay. Okay. So the, the K. Uh, okay. <coughs> uh, let's see here. Um, this one here, I don't know. Okay, you can change it to NCDX. DX weather space weather the hell let's see what happens when we put space weather there oh okay so you get the solar flux index the x-ray and whatever these other numbers are what was there before Uh, interesting how these are all popping up over here like this. Sunspot number. I actually really didn't have this thing set to do that. So it might be a new function of it. You look at you click on it and it actually shows up down there. No one doesn't though. Okay. So also this is glitchy. Like right now it's not responding to uh, what I'm trying to do over here. And 
You can tell if it glitches because sometimes the clock will stop counting. So when you click on these, okay. Okay, I don't want space weather. I want Let me click on this DE weather maybe. Just see what Okay, so this should be like uh my own temperature here, I guess. So, it's actually more helpful than some of this other crap. Okay. Um, okay, so, I don't want the solar flux. Um... What was on here before? It was, it was supposed to be, uh, live spots. Yeah, I don't want this. Somehow. Wait, no, live spots was always supposed to be over here. Yeah, oh my God. Okay. This thing is like, it changed a bunch of stuff. Okay. I don't think it gives me the option of live spots over here now. Um, okay. Now, um, there's also another one where you can come over here and get summits on the air like I have on my other one. I wonder if that's what it's... Okay, so that's on the air. So we'll leave that on there. Um, it'd be nice if we could, like, actually... Add a few more things. Okay. So... And the solar flux. No. Uh, we'll have like, uh, I'm gonna put like three different things on there. They don't change real fast, but I like to monitor the X ray. Um, the, the image of the sun is nice. Um, I'm not sure what I need to do to change it. I really am upset with what they did with this clock. Like, they've changed the map completely. Um, I want that map. I, I don't want this map. I don't know how to change it. I don't know if it's possible to change it. Um, this is obviously a newer version. So if you download this and do all this, you're going to end up with this one. I don't know how to get the old one. Uh, the old one is a terrain map I like better. This is... Well, I guess one thing that is kind of cool about this one is it breaks them down into, like, actual, like, countries and, uh, states and things like that. But it doesn't do it for the United States or Canada. Which is kind of weird. Um, I guess if you're not used to something else, it probably will be fine for you. I clicked on something and all of a sudden that popped up. I, I don't really know what I did. Um, 
But it's basically giving me the path. Look, I just changed again. I wish it would just go away. So here's our spots. You can see that they're all on 160. Um, okay, it disappeared. Ooh, I don't even know what that is. All right. So not only I can't change my call sign on here, what? Okay, so I click on the top and I get this thing here. It says something. Okay. It says I'm in UTC seven. I don't know what the fuck that means. Cancel. Okay. It tells me there's DX right here. That's not fucking DX. Are you fucking kidding me? You can select a satellite. No. Okay. Alright. Um, I'm not sure. But it's been fun, guys. This thing was a pain in the butt. Hopefully you're installation goes easier than mine.